She is straight talk. She is a no-nonsense type of lady. You are about to view the television show for real and no nonsense. It's straight talk for real life situations. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for television talk show host, Ramey Rodriguez. Hello, hello everyone. I am so glad to have you here another Sunday and I thank God for your presence. Today, I would like to talk to you about kindness, the power of kindness. The Bible tells us in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, that is one of the most most profound acts of kindness that any human being can make. And God sent his son Jesus to make that sacrifice for us. As I said, when I was speaking uh, on the program, for Resurrection Sunday, that he was both God and man. And with him being God and man, he had a choice. And he chose to be kind to us so that we will be able to see how we can be kind to each other. He exhibited the behavior of kindness. He was the epitome of kindness walking in human form. And so I, that power that was dwelled in him, he has put in us as children of God. And so that's why I want to talk to everyone within my hearing about the power of kindness. Kindness is so profound because Kindness exhibits strength. When a person has been persecuted or mistreated or done wrong, it is a, it is a godly character that is shown when that person does not retaliate but exhibits Christ-like kindness and compassion. And we already know that the fruits of the spirit, well, some of us know, but I'm going to reiterate this, but Christians know that the fruits of the spirit, are according to Galatians 5, 22 and 23, are love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Well, goodness goes along with kindness. And sometimes it's hard to be good to people when they're unkind to you. But the greatest strength that we can exhibit is kindness. And I am not saying that we should be people that let other people run over us. No, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that our spirits, if we can, are capable of because some areas we need to put the spirit. If we are uh, working towards perfecting our Christian walk, then there should be discipline attached to our decision to be kind. And discipline in the whole by the Holy Spirit helps to be kind when being mistreated. No, a person should not allow someone to abuse them. I'm not saying that. Again, I'm not saying that. But the response can be such that the kindness that is exhibited shows the strength of a godly character. Jesus walked around in truth. 
and he he told mankind what God expected of them, and he told them whether they liked it or not. And that's what kindness has to do sometimes. Kindness does not allow people to make a mockery of, 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 the per, of a person, but what kindness does as in strength of who you are in Christ, stand on the word of God and, and do not allow yourself to be anything except God out, no matter how people act towards you. That's what kindness does. And I think that by using kindness as a powerful weapon against mean, cruel people, it disarms them. How does a person, how can a person respond to someone who refuses to engage with them in a negative manner? Michelle Obama, our first lady said, when they go low, you go high. That's what kindness does. A character is such that you're not even going to stoop to a level that is beneath being who God designed you to be. That's very powerful. Now, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 through 10, we see, be kind to one another, tenderhearted. Forgiving one another as God in Christ saved you. That means kindness should be in your heart. We should practice being kind. When I told you a few minutes ago about how people act and your kindness can be tested. That's a time of practice. That's a time when God can perfect who we are as his children. When we're able to learn not to respond, not to react to ungodly behavior, but to respond with godly character to negative behavior. I also want to reiterate that that kindness being a fruit of the spirit will provide a foundation for the other fruits of the spirit because there cannot be love without kindness that's why i read john three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Kindness is also connected to love. The Bible tells us to love one another, as I said in Galatians. When we love our sister or our brother, a hu another human being, it is difficult for us to do them harm. When we love our sister or brother that God has created, it is difficult to do them harm. I wanted to say that twice. I, I, I often think to myself, what separates us from the animals of what we do. And I think that all of us have been challenged 
in regards to kindness. I can honestly say I have not passed a, uh, some of my tests in regards to kindness when I have been mistreated. Because after a while, when you're mistreated on more than one occasion by the same person, then as a human being, your patience can become very thin. But that's when the Holy Spirit comes in. And we have to yield our will to God's will and let him show us what we should do in regards to that situation and how we should do it. Because of our own free will, we can become angry. But the Bible tells us to be angry. We can, we can be angry, but don't, but don't sin. And without Jesus Christ and the character of Christ being our discipline, it's hard to be angry and not sin. And I'm saying this because I don't want anybody to think that when they have reacted and not responded properly, but reacted to how someone mistreated them in a negative manner to give them back what they were giving to them. God will forgive you. God knows that that was an area of weakness. Don't give up on who God designed you to be. As a human being, you are flawed. F-L-A-W-E-D. And God realizes that. That's why he sent Jesus to die and be resurrected again on the third day for our salvation. Because human beings are flawed. Just continue to try to grow in that area. My experiences may not have been your experiences, but in being humans, I'm sure that we can identify with certain situations. Don't let anybody beat you over your head about where you fell short about anything. Just try to do better. And I believe that you can do better. I thought about this subject and my mind reflected on some occasions in my life where I had uh, people to go out of their way to be unkind to me. And I would never forget one particular situation in which a lady that I knew went out of her way to be unkind. And it was a very hurtful situation because it was just something as simple as going to a sporting event and then the individual did not want us my, my family member and me to ride with them to the sporting event. And this is not somebody that we do not know. This is somebody we've known all our lives. So we ask, once we were able to secure my mother's vehicle, could we follow this individual to the sporting event? And the individual 
nod her head and gave a look like she really didn't want us to, but she was going to allow us just to follow her to the school because we were young and didn't know how to get there. And when we got on the expressway, she drove so fast and was dodging in and out of traffic trying to lose us, my family member and me, that my family member that was driving hit the yellow containers that would divide the expressway into one direction or the other. We could have lost our lives. And she continued to speed on down the road. The guard helped us. And we were able to get to our destination safely. When we got to the point of it was in this last quarter. But we got to say what end of the third quarter. End of the third quarter, but we got to say it just so happens when we walked in, she was sitting in the space with people that knew us. And they said our names because they were happy to see us. And to see the spring on her face, that she couldn't believe that we had even navigated and found our way to the sporting arena. She had her little face on. She didn't even want to be there. We went on and we spoke to her and we sat down. And I, I remember when I was sitting there, I started to think in my life, think about myself, what have I ever as a child said or done to this individual or any of my family members? Because she just really did not care for us. And when, when us being children, why she was so cool and almost jeopardized and and could have jeopardized our lives just because she didn't want us to even call her. And that down the road, that bothered my mind. And, and I couldn't look at anything. My feelings were very hurt. And I could not get anything. But the years passed. And I remember one day I had to go take care of some business and I on my way taking care of some business and I walked past this woman and I spoke to her. Hello ma'am, how are you? And she asked me where I was going. And I told her I was on my way to take care of some business. And she said, you time will you just take out of your time to walk with me for about two minutes at the most. And because I did not have a set time where I needed to be, I said, yes, ma'am. And she let me know that she had a health area to where she had to walk. And that she was sickly unto death at that point. Well, I walked with her. And at times, I even had to make sure that she was able to, to, to stand and to, to keep walking. She kind of leaned on me at times to catch her breath. I didn't feel any malice in my heart. And then when I was able to get her back safely to the starting point, she had met up with me. She told me, baby, thank you so much. And I said, yes, ma'am, you're, you're welcome, ma'am. Shortly after that, she died. And, and it did not really come to my remembrance until later after 
she had passed away, what she had done. And I, I never forgot that. This is the same woman that drove so fast that my life was almost jeopardized and my family member's life was almost jeopardized just in trying to follow her down the road. Same woman. And, and I thought about God. And it gave me no joy. But I thought about who God is. And God sees when people mistreat us and mishandle his children. Again, it brought me no joy to see that woman in that type of pain. But my brother, my sister, I want to let you know that when people abuse who you are and they handle you, God is deeply offended. I'm speaking to somebody right now within my hearing. Where people have abused your person in this hand. God is deeply offended. Don't you worry about it. Don't you let it break your heart. I know it's hard. I've been there. I can tell you. I want to go out with this. It's been very hard when people mistreat you and mistreat you. And sometimes with people, the case of the woman that I referred to, that was one time. But when people, I've had people do it multiple times. But I'm a witness. As a child of God, God sees it. Hold your peace. Try your best. Hold your peace. I know it's hard sometimes, but put on the whole arm of God and ask him to strengthen you, the Holy Spirit to strengthen you on all sides. Because somebody could be watching your life. A person who does not know Christ could be watching your life and how you respond to people who are not doing you wrong. They want to know about this Jesus that you talk about. You have to show them who this Jesus is that you talk about. The one you say to save your soul. You have to show people who this is. I can remember another story that I watched one time on, on the news. It was a little news story about uh, a sheriff in a small town who had to arrest this young lady for doing drugs. But this lady was totally strung out on drugs. But instead of him putting her down and dogging her out, even though he had to do his job, he encouraged her. So much so until when she went before the court and had to go through what the court mandated as her her penalty for 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 violating the law. She remembered what that man had told her, and he kept up with her and corresponded with her. And finally, she got a hold of that drug situation. Cleaned herself up. Got a job and became a productive citizen. One day, the sheriff 
went to the doctor's office and realized that his kidneys were not functioning properly. And that he needed a kidney transplant. And the person who gave him the kidney was that young lady. She had cleaned herself up so well that her health was such she was to where she was able to give him a kidney to save his life. My brother, my sister, this is why I tell you be careful for nothing. You know how you never know what God is going to do when you are kind. You never know how God is going to work in your life or the life of the person that you are kind to. As a, as a mother with two children and raising them after my divorce on my own, I, I went through situations and I said, Lord, I, I need you to keep me every day and every hour. Because it was not the same as being a grown person and on my own and like I was before I did not have children. Now I had two children depending on me. And one of my co-workers told me, Miss Rodriguez, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you get up every day. My mind would be gone if I had to go through a divorce like you went through and all the things that you went through during your marriage and, and, and then after your marriage and still having to come to work and and and, and you do your job with efficiency. I don't I don't know. I don't I, I don't I can she she said I can no she said she didn't say I don't know she said I don't know how you do it. She said I can tell you and this is a, a believer in Christ but she said at her level in Christ in that area she said she didn't know if she could even believe God to to do this for her, what he had done, would do that for her because she was watching me and she knew the the, the the total amount of pressure that I was under. And as she talked to me, the tears ran down my face. And I told her, I had a professor in college to tell me that God is a heart fixing a mind regulator. And every day I was asking him to fix my heart on a daily basis and to regulate my mind. And that's what he was doing for me on a daily basis. Well, one day I went to Dallas and some years ago and I went to pick my sister up from her job. And my sister said, can you take me around to this restaurant, this fast food restaurant so we can get something to eat real quick. And she said, be watchful of getting out the car. She said, because sometimes the people that hang out around the restaurant and they're so bold now they just walk up to your car to panhandle. And as soon as we drove up into the parking lot, this lady walked up to my car and went to the car and was trying to pan out a startle me. She said, didn't I tell you? And it startled me so bad. I said, excuse me, excuse me, please, please. I have to get out of my car. I, I was discombobulated. Because of her proximity to me, how swiftly she walked up to me and it seemed aggressive. But what it was that I found out later on, she was so hungry, she wanted something to eat so bad. I ended up in the restaurant and had waited my turn in line. My sister was standing next to me. And just as I got the order, because my sister decided to order before me. 
This lady walked up and said, may I have some water? To the lady behind the, the counter. And that lady gave her a cup and she gave her so many cents, C-E-N-T-S, for some water. And as I was looking at the menu, the Lord said, ask that lady what she wants on that menu. And no matter what she says, she wants to eat out for her. And I turned to my right side and I, I said, excuse me, ma'am, what would you like to eat? And she turned her head and looked at me, I'll never forget, so sharp and so profound, like she was shocked. And she said, are you talking to me? I said, yes, ma'am. What? Would you like to eat now? She said, I, you know, it doesn't matter. I said, no, ma'am. Whatever you desire on this menu, I will pay for. And she ordered herself a box of chicken and, and, and a, a drink. And she began to cry. And she said, ma'am, I'm so thankful. She said, I am so hungry. And she said, today is my birthday. And she said, I said to God, all I wanted was something to eat for my birthday. And I'm trying not to cry when I tell you the story. And I said, my God. And I looked at her and I said, today is my birthday. And she said, you're playing. I said, no, I'm not. Today is my birthday also. And we, we were both crying. And she said, well, what are the odds on that? I said, I don't know. I said, but it's nice to meet you, ma'am. And as she was leaving out of the restaurant, she turned and she said, she began to say, may God be with you until we meet again. And she pointed at me and I responded and pointed back at her. May God be with you. I spoke it right back to her until we meet again. And when I got my food and I went back to the car, I remembered what my coworker had told me as a teacher about how when I was in the teaching school and, 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 and I was going to work every day and, and she, she saw me still doing my job and she said she didn't know how she would have been able to take it. I thought about what she said and I told I tell her that God is a heart fix and a mind regulator. And I, I thought about it and I said, Lord, that could have been me. That could have been me, Jesus. That could have been me. God, you've been kind to me. You kept me when I couldn't keep myself. You held on to me, Lord, and you wouldn't let me go. I don't know where that woman is today. I pray that she has her life together now. But we never know the twists and turns of life because the devil is shrewd. He's a tricky foe, F-O-E. He's tricky. But for the grace of God, any of us be in a psychiatric facility bouncing off the walls, Oh, God is good. When you have the opportunity to be kind, be kind. If those were kind to you, try your best to mature in that area. I know I'm working on myself. Try your best to mature in that area. Where you may not be as proficient with feeling people who are not kind to you. So that you can let God be God. 
He may turn that person's heart around and let them be your biggest blessing. You never know. The love of God reigns only just as well as the, the unjust. He's a sovereign God to do what he wants, what he wants, when he wants, who he wants. I want to tell you this last story and, and then we're going to end our broadcast today. And I thank God for allowing your entertainment to let me bring this broadcast to you on the BTN network. But I have one more story for you. I, I thought about the story of Elvis Presley who was in Tennessee, walking down the street as a young man. He looked into the window of this store that sold beautiful suits for men. And the owner of the store was fixing his merchandise, walking from different areas and making sure that all his merchandise was probably put up so that it can be seen easily. And here's Elvis Presley looking in the, and looking in the window as this man is hanging up displays of suits, beautiful suits. The man beckons for Elvis Presley to come in. And when when Elvis Presley came inside, he was admiring all the beautiful suits. And he told them, he said, sir, I can't afford, cannot afford anything in here. I just wanted to peer through the window and see the beautiful suits you have in your establishment. And the owner of the store asked Elvis Presley, would you like to try a suit on? He said, sir, again, I cannot afford any of your suits. With, uh, I, I don't want to even try one on because I can't afford it. And the man said, That's quite all right. I don't mind. You're welcome. Just pick a suit and pick a suit and try it on. Elvis Presley tried on that suit, and the man said, You look so nice. And Elvis said, sir, I'm a singer. And one day when I get famous, I'm going to come and I'm going to buy my clothes from you. Well, the man saw that Elvis Presley had hopes and dreams beyond the money that he had, but he did not talk him down. He told him, son, you're, you're welcome to come back and I'd be honored to dress you. When Elvis Presley became famous, he went back and he began to buy his suits from that same man who had allowed him to come into his establishment and try on a suit. And that man became more famous because he was the person who dressed Elvis Presley. He dressed Elvis Presley in his first suit and then he dressed him in his last suit for his burial, for his funeral. Again, my brother, my sister, be careful for nothing. God knows more than we can ever even hope, think, or imagine. To. We must have enough faith to trust him. And we must remember how much God loved us when we were in a sinful nature. And then we can have more compassion and empathy on us. 
Well, I hope I have not kept you too long. I hope that this broadcast about the power of kindness has blessed your spirit because it definitely blessed mine. Thank you for watching. Be on Endure Entertainment, BFTM Network. And may God be with you until we meet again. I see. All right, goodbye.